In the Dead Space series, the Markers are shown to us as the accursed obelisks that bring about the apocalypse, creating necromorphs, and bringing unity in the most horrific way possible. At first glance, that may be the case. However, when we peel back the layers, we can see an entirely different picture. In this video, we will be looking through the scattered records of the Marker, what its purpose is, and what it actually does. The markers are double helix shaped objects of alien origin. The purpose of the markers are to form the Brethren Moons by pulling all of the necromorphs and corruption together, fusing the biomass into a single entity. However, the marker does not create the necromorphs or reanimate dead bodies. Rather, the scientists who study the marker end up releasing the contagion upon themselves that transforms dead cells into necrotized cells, which leads into the creation of necromorphs. This is because the researchers and scientists see the symbols carved into the skin of the markers, which translates to a code to create a form of recombinated DNA, which would remain dormant in the presence of the marker due to the dormancy field that the marker presents. On Aegis 7, the recombinant, even outside of the dormancy field, would remain inactive when it was discovered that the cells would react to dead cells or tissue, absorbing and creating more of the recombination, which would end up killing two doctors and started transforming them into a leaper and an infector, which would lead to a full-scale outbreak in the colony. The marker's electromagnetic energy is used by the necrotized cells to fuel the reanimation and to help necromorphs to move, much like how our own limbs are able to move in conjunction with the impulses that happen within our brains and nerves. Hence why when the marker is destroyed, the necromorphs are destroyed also, as seen in Dead Space Aftermath. In the case of Dead Space 2, when the Ishimura was brought to the sprawl, scientists and doctors who work on the cover-up story with EarthGov would find their own gruesome and disturbing findings with the sludge-like material found throughout the ship. One could say that the doctors who would have been decommissioned from the ship's cover-up story project may have taken some of the sludge back with them to the government sector and accidentally released the contagion, which would find its way into the mines if that was the origin sight. The journey or cycle of the marker would be as follows. It would begin with a black marker being spat out by a necromorph moon or being grabbed by a necromorph moon and thrown in any direction which would travel through space until crashing into a planet. Once there, it would wait for intelligent life to discover it and to create the contagion from its markings, which would kill and transform the victims into horrific and gruesome creatures known to us as necromorphs that would seek out the survivors of the outbreak, restarting the cycle over and over and over again until the job was done. The outbreak would continue until enough biomass had been gathered and brought back to the outskirts of the marker location where convergence would begin. The marker would then begin to levitate into the sky, pulling all of the necromorphs up with it, where they will be fused into a single entity with the marker at its core. As many would like to have you believe the tale of forced evolution, the marker does not influence other life forms to become more intelligent, forcing evolution upon them. This is a misconception, as that is what the unitologists believe that the markers will provide the final stage of evolution, which is actually incorrect. The case of intelligent life finding and deciphering the marker symbols, exhausting the resources of their world, and becoming vastly overpopulated is an inevitable issue. Due to its limitless electromagnetic energy, the natives would try to use the marker to fill the void in their resource issues, unknowingly putting themselves at risk of catastrophe. Even in the event of a marker being destroyed or shattered, all pieces left behind will still remain active, even if the end goal of convergence would be out of reach. As I don't know about you, but I doubt that the shards found embedded in the hull of the Ishimura, or the shard that Kutner found, would be able to complete a convergence event. However, the pieces can still provide electromagnetic energy, thus an outbreak of the recombinant contagion can still occur. 
Upon activation, the marker sends out a sound across a varied band of frequencies through the electromagnetic spectrum to alpha, delta, and theta brainwaves. This would be theorized as harmless by the scientists at the red marker testing facilities of the sovereign colonies. However, in the case of the second incident on Aegis 7, it does pose a problem for the colonists, that being dementia and other illnesses. These frequencies of electromagnetic energy and brainwaves would be later dubbed as the marker signal. Under these circumstances, the marker presents insomnia to life forms, creating sleep deprivation and depression would soon follow. The sleep deprivation would be one of the reasons people begin to hallucinate. Take it from Pia Trib, the man who stayed awake for 11 days. When you don't get enough sleep, your world may become a hellish reality. In his case, he would begin hallucinating that his shoes were full of spiders, cats and mice were scuttling around his office, and objects began combusting and setting alight. Another factor for hallucinations is when a person is placed within a necromorph outbreak, they will see some very horrific and gruesome sights, whether that be dead bodies littered around the corridors and rooms of a station or ship, or the necromorphs themselves, or the sight of loved ones dying in front of them could snap someone's mind and make them begin to hallucinate due to all the horrific imagery they would be seeing. One more factor to go into is the stress on the brain. When encountering the necromorphs, the people may try to make sense of them while processing on what they are or how they came to be. This would create a lot of stress on the mind, which can lead into hallucinations. Certain workaholics in the real world have found this out the hard way. Pushing yourself too much can lead yourself into a different realm within your own mind as a coping mechanism that your brain installs for you. The same can be said for delusions. Other cases of hallucinations Hallucinations can be brought on by the dementia that the marker gives to you, which is a byproduct of the instructions on how to reconstruct a marker or the mental blueprint, which is most notably seen in the cases of Nolan Stross and Isaac Clarke, with hallucinations and delusions being the symptoms of the illness. The ability to create markers comes down to the intelligence of the individual, as most with an average or subpar intelligence wouldn't be able to comprehend the information being sent into their brains, which would result in them losing their ability to function properly and go into a more feral stage or insanity. The ones that are intelligent enough or exceed the threshold of intelligence would be able to reconstruct the markers and hold a slight understanding of the information presented within their own minds. A misconception of a marker's origin is that the Brethren Moon creates them, which is actually incorrect. The Brethren Moon does not create markers, if it did it would have to have the necessary components within itself to do so, and from what we have seen the Moon is mostly comprised of flesh, with a marker at its core. However in some instances in convergence multiple markers would be either floating nearby or within the Moon itself, and perhaps the Moons imprint the newly red markers into black markers to be sent to other planets or hurtling through space. The markers possess a dormancy field that will force all recombinant or necrotized flesh into dormancy, or as dubbed by the scientists as the dead space field. It is currently unknown why this happens. However, the reason could be that due to the uncontrollable nature of the necromorphs, the dormancy field would be a way for the marker to protect itself from the recombination, so that the flesh that grows over the walls, floors, and ceilings, that's called corruption, does not grow over the marker and interfere with the electromagnetic energy, which would be very counterproductive to their goal. Another reason could be to protect itself from the necromorphs themselves. As we have seen, the necromorphs do possess a certain level of intelligence, sabotaging electrical wiring that could be used to power doors, lights, and other things. So in theory, the necromorphs could possess the power required to destroy the marker if they really wanted to. So the dormancy field would be required to ensure its own safety within the event of an outbreak. In the first incident of Aegis 7, a scientist had been granted a vision to build a pedestrian to expand the dormancy field so that they could escape the nightmare without being pursued by the necromorphs, which they did accomplish. However, they shortly died afterwards to unknown reasons. Once they fired the pedestrian, the recombinant life forms seemed to perish, however, the cells and tissues actually just went into dormancy. This may be seen to be a major problem for convergence, however, I believe that the moons knew that there was not enough biomass on Aegis 7 at that time, so they granted that vision so that the scientists would believe it would save them, but in fact it was actually a trap set for humanity, because if necromorphs had been discovered by the sovereign colonies, it could put the plan of convergence into jeopardy 
Jeopardy. So they allowed for this to happen and for the events of Dead Space Extraction to proceed nearly 200 years later. Many players or lore finders of Dead Space do like to sweep the pedestrian under the rug as they believe it to make no sense within the lore of future Dead Space games. However, near the end of Dead Space 2, how many necromorphs do you see climbing all over the marker or roaming around at the base near Tymon? That's right, none. Even the Ubermorph can't even follow you to the marker. With Dead Space 3, however, near the Rosetta Labs, you can see Necromorphs in close proximity to markers, either frozen or not. And I see that a bit like a gameplay mechanic, as that would be very overpowering if you could just camp next to a marker and eliminate the threat, then proceed to the next area, but in the lore, it does exist. After Marker 3A was extracted, the crew all felt sick to their stomachs, with a few passing out and one vomiting and collapsing shortly after this. This event is probably due to the dormancy field being shrunken back to its original size, like if your body was used to functioning within a pressurized room for weeks or months or maybe even years, and we all of a sudden depressurized the room without warning in quick succession. The same probably would happen or something even similar to that event. The appearances of markers can vary between different makers. In the case of the original found in the Gulf of Mexico, its appearance is completely black with visible markings all over it. The copies like Marker 3A retain the same shape but come with a distinct difference in design, that being the red hue emanating from it. However, it seems to operate in the same way as all the others do. The gold marker from Dead Space is the only one in the known universe of its color, but again acts in the same way as all the rest do as well. The colours may just be cosmetic or perhaps has something to do with a unique property within the marker itself, however none of that is canon so I will not include it in this video. The markers are indeed a very complex series of structures within the Dead Space universe, perhaps too complex for us to fully comprehend, but maybe one day, one day we will see which race spawned the contagion and the markers, but only time will tell. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed or are loving the Dead Space lore then hit the video up with a like rating, comment your thoughts below and I look forward to hearing from you. Sign up for the membership today for exclusive rewards by hitting the join button and submitting your details and subscribe to be part of the British Alliance today for future content, community posts and streams and I'll see all of you on the front lines and have a good one. Ugh, <sighs> oh, I fucking hate Mondays. What takes him so long? The comms room should have been open by now. I need to contact that bloody marine from USM Valor. Engineer, do you copy? What's the situation up there? The comms room should have been open like 30 minutes ago. Uh, they're gonna be open in a second, just dealing with a slug problem real quick. Alright, good. Let me know when it's opened. I need to contact that the soldier from the USM Valor. It's gone. Comms should be open. Hail them. <sighs> USM Valor, this is Helios Max aboard the USG Shimura. Do you copy? Yeah, I copy, but kind of dealing with something at the moment. We found an escape pod, opened it up, and now it, whatever was inside, it's now killing the crew. Well, that's a bit awkward. Well, not my problem. What the hell is that? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh shit. Hmm, that's weird. An impact on the ship. Hmm, I thought I fixed all the this cannon. Maybe Engineer will know. Hey, Engineer, do you copy? Any idea what was that impact? Engineer? Engineer, do you copy? Oh, no. That was just the, the ship hitting the ship. What the bloody hell are you talking about? Ship hitting ship? Uh, uh. Hmm, okay. Uh, hold on, Engineer. Uh, British, do you copy? Are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. I got good news, and I've got bad news for you. Which one do you want? <sighs> if it's going to be about that crash into the ship, I don't want to hear it. I don't know how you ended up floating in space, and I don't care. So get your floating sorry ass up here on crew deck. We'll meet up in 30 minutes. Engineer, this goes the same to you. Copy that, Chief. Heading your way now. Well, before he comes, I'm gonna grab that shock point drive that I need for the shuttle, so I think I don't think he's gonna miss it. Ooh, there you are. Yoink. Okay, uh, I think I should return to the ship. Uh, I do hope those two are getting along.
I said park next to the ship next time, not into the ship, okay? Do you have any idea how long this is going to take me to fix, okay? I'm spo I got tickets to the Zero-G basketball game this weekend. Oh, well, sorry, but who the hell puts a live monster inside of a escape pod? Christ, it's like you're trying to kill somebody. Oh, there you are. Did I interrupt or something? Uh, what the hell do you have in your hand there? Oh, nothing. This is just a smoothie that I got from the sound kiosk. Okay, kind of looked a little bit like it was part of my ship. Let's get this over and done with. I need to get back to the sprawl. They have some business for me, something to do with going to somewhere to collect shards or something like that. Hey, right, we're gonna meet Helios down at the pub. First round's on you. Why me? Because you crashed your ship into my ship. That's yeah, why. Yeah, but you sent, but you sent an escape pod. Oh, so that's what happened to my girlfriend. Shit. Well, I'm not gonna mention that detail to them, so... It should be you buying first. Well, gentlemen, uh, let's discuss about this remake, shall we?